that, that befits what we are asking for. Just as you cannot give your, your child any injurious thing, God will not give us anything that will be injurious to us. Even though we might not know. And your child can cry and say, you don't love me, you don't love me. Why don't you give me your car keys? You know, I love you. It's because I love you, I'm not even giving you the car keys in the first place. Because it's dangerous, you are not there yet. And when they're there, you buy them your car. That's fine. And if God is not answering, it could be maybe it's aligning other factors and people that will facilitate the fulfillment of your request or his plans for you. Maybe it's facilitating putting things together. There's somebody out here that your dream needs to connect to. I have said it before. The dream of Joseph will not become a reality until Pharaoh had had his own dream. The dream of Pharaoh, the dream, the fulfillment of the dream of Joseph is anchored on the dream of Pharaoh. If Pharaoh does not have the dream, the dream of Joseph will remain in the cooler until that time when there's another dream. Dreams must collide so that one will help the other to come to manifestation. Give you the example of Elizabeth and Mary. Why did Angel Gabriel tell why did he tell Mary go to Elizabeth? When Mary said, How can this be? He said, Go to Elizabeth. That was considered barren. She's already six months pregnant. So when God is delaying, He's working out certain things that will manifest that which you have. And finally, of course, He could be working out to clear out sometimes some things in the future. That have the capacity to endanger what he's planned to do in your life. It might be in the future. Working things out. I gave us the example of uh, uh, just Jesus and Aaron. Are we to believe that just God doesn't have the, the power to kill Aaron? But they made Jesus, you know, they, they, flee, they flee from, they went to Egypt. And then when, time, when Aaron died, he said, Go, now, go back now look for those who seek after this child, and what? Have died. So remind yourself of his thoughts and not your thoughts, his ways and not your ways. And, uh, and the third hour, remember. The first one said, rephrase, thank you. Remind yourself. And then the last one, the last hour is, remember all his benefits from the past to the present. Many people, we know many people are grateful. People. It is one thing you have not done for them, they remember. They don't remember all the things you have done. The sacrifice. They don't remember. It's just one thing you have not done. Say, hey, you see now? I have to my heart. They don't do that, that. And you are wondering, is this a human being or what? Something. With all the things I've done, and you cannot remember all those things. Just this one time. And many times we are like that to God. We don't remember all the things He has done, and we focus. The enemy is having us to focus to highlight or accentuate just one thing. Remember, that's why David talks in Psalm, 10, Psalm 103, verse 1 5. He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and what? And forget not all his benefits. And he goes on to recount all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who grants you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your youth or your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed and you remember, remember, remember. To remember is an intentional exercise. It is easier to forget than to remember. So to remember is possible is to be intentionally remembering what God has done. Somebody learn something? Yes, sir. God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And finally, why should we thank God? I want us to understand the base. And why? So now we want to, why should we thank God? So we go back to Habakkuk, chapter 3, 17 to 18. Why should we thank God? Listen to Habakkuk. Who, has, who does not know why God will allow Babylon to overrun God's people? He could have taken away the sins. He could have done something else. Why would you allow your people? Habakkuk asked questions and God was not answering. And then finally, Habakkuk realized something. And that's what is recorded for us in Habakkuk 3, 17 to 18. He said, though the fig tree does not burn, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and, and, and the fig produce no food, though there are no 
sheep in the pain and no cattle in the storm. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. In other words, although these are the two key words, although and yet, although this has not happened yet, I will do this. Although this has not happened yet, I will do this. Although this has not happened yet, I will do this. In other words, I want to use these verses to show that regardless of how things may look on this Thanksgiving year, or on the summons, we have a reason to choose Thanksgiving. Number one, we thank God for his unchanging sovereignty. We thank God for his what? Unchanging suffering. God is suffering and it he does not change. God says, I am the Lord, I change not. Malachi 3 6. He presented the exception. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I may not be able to rejoice in my situation, but I can always rejoice in the God that is suffering above all things, above my problem, above my situation. I can rejoice because above all things, he was not. It was not taken by surprises when difficulties and issues of that up. God is not taken by surprises. In fact, God may be testing you. It may be a test. So the school is not talking about no kids go to the next class without a test. You cannot have a testimony without a test. No glory without story. Miracle means testimony means something must have gone wrong. And God has intervened, and that's has become a miracle, and has become a testimony. You cannot have a testimony, you cannot have a miracle, if something unpleasant has not taken place first. Am I making sense to you? Yes, sir. So we thank God for what is unchanging, and in fact, I put this, the three U's, letter U. The first U is the, the unchanging sovereignty of God. Habakkuk sees a bleak future for the kingdom of Judah. Yet he chooses to thank God because of God's unchanging sovereignty. Listen to what he said. The Lord Jehovah, the, the Lord is not there, Jehovah. It means self existing, eternal, changeless, covenant, keeping God. We may not always perceive what he's doing. He said to Isaiah, For my ways are not your ways. So, so the first few there, thank God for his unchanging sovereignty. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament, is God until the end of time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The second you. Thank God for his unceasing salvation. Thank God for his what? Unceasing salvation. Notice Habakkuk. In verse 18. Says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in what? In God my Savior. No matter the circumstances. They cannot alter my salvation. Your salvation is secure in Jesus Christ. And Paul said, I am going from faith unto faith. I'm an ear of God and a joint ear with Christ. I can never be lost and I can never lose my salvation for God's salvation is unceasing. I was saved, but I'm being saved and I will continue to be saved. Life is uncertain. One phone call, one doctor's visit, one day or one hour can change lives instantly. The word salvation not only applies to the soul, it also applies, it also means deliverance and rescue. I have a long verse there, write it down, Romans 8, 35 to 39. Romans 8, 35 to 39. Uh, 30. Romans 8, 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or so? All in four, you know, and it goes so that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. So the second use is the unceasing salvation. And finally, the last use is the unlimited strength of God. Thank God for his unlimited strength. You see that the focus is not on material things, not on houses and cars. The focus is on God. That's what Habakkuk is helping us to understand, to thank God for who he is, for his unchanging sovereignty, for his unceasing salvation, and for his unlimited strength. We read in verse 19, the sovereign Lord is my strength. Habakkuk 3.19. The Lord, sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the eyes. The word for strength suggests ability. It is the Lord's strength that we, that, the reason why we are alive, you able to, if it's for strength in our lives. Thank God for his unchanging sovereignty. Thank God for his unceasing salvation. Thank God for his unlimited strength. 
The Bible said that when we are weak, he is strong. And the strength of God is revealed in our weaknesses. So the focus of this Thanksgiving, God's people, even though it's a, well, I, I don't know whether to say it's a wrong question to ask, but we can rephrase that question. What are you thankful for? Many will be thankful for their daddy and mommy, rightfully so. Many will be thankful for their pizza of life, rightfully so. Many will be thankful for their houses, for their everything, rightfully so. But I want, to, I want us to know from this day, what are you thankful for? I am thankful for the unchanging God, the sovereignty of God, the unceasing salvation, and the unlimited. I am thankful for the God that I serve. I am thankful that I know this God. I am thankful that I am the Son and the blood of God. I am thankful that He has engraved my, my name in His palm. I am thankful that not a strand of my ear will fall without God. I am thankful that I know God. The Bible says, those who know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. How much do you know your God? How familiar are you with God? It's not sufficient to come to church Sunday after Sunday, but our physical experience translates into a spiritual understanding of who God is. So when we sit around the table this Thursday, enjoy the meal and thank God for who He is. Thank Him for the provision. Thank Him for the gift of life. Thank Him that you are not being fed intravenously. Thank you that you are doing the G your G2. Thank him that has, your taste board is still working. Thank him that you can, you can, you can, you can eat, digest, and, and release. Thank him for everything. The focus is primarily on God. And as you thank him for, for that which he has done, I'm telling you, you are positioning yourself for the greater revelation of the Almighty God. Shall we us of this morning? I want to bless you. I say, Father, I bless your name. Thank you for giving me a, a new perspective on what it is to be thankful for. Habakkuk could not understand what was happening to him. Neither does he understand what God is trying to do. And yet, although this was now this was happening that I didn't like, yet I will try. I will thank you. And we are able to discover three things to be thankful for this 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 Thanksgiving and all the days of our life. So thank you for his unchanging sovereignty. Same yesterday, same today, same forever. So thank you for his unceasing salvation. So thank him for his unlimited strength. So thank him and bless the Holy Spirit for the day he brought unto the awareness of the saving grace in Jesus Christ. That today we can be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. Father, we bless you, we give you praise. Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord, for the delivery of your word. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand the lies of the enemy. And helping us to how can we break this pattern. And you have illuminated our heart. You have shown your light into the dark areas of our life. You have exposed the deceit of the enemy, the bait of Satan, so that we are not trapped. Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord. The Son of Man now who sees, let your voice continue to minister to your people. Bringing clarity even to that which has been said this morning. Yeah. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord, continue to, continue to remind us that which have delivered for us this morning. Yeah. And that we can also be the apostles, the agents of transformation, helping others to reframe and to see things differently. Yeah. That together, when we come to Thanksgiving, on every day, we can thank you for all that you have been in our lives. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord.